So obviously we've got that uh, summit coming up, which um, we've realised that when we our DNA is sport. Yeah. Um, but actually, when you look at sports events and you're looking at city activation, even a medal ceremony, right. you know, a screen is a screen, a stage is a stage, a sound system is a sound system. Yeah. So effectively, this UK summit is uh, has been actually a pilot for a couple of years now nice. to look at the wider events industry. So it could be in festivals, be an air show, um, anything like that. So. Welcome back to the Sporting Global Podcast, and today I'm here with Dennis Mills. And first, Dennis, first of all, thanks for taking the time, and good to see you again. How's everything going? Yeah, um, greetings from Australia. I'm currently in Melbourne before heading up to the Sunshine Coast, who are an Olympic city uh, contributor to 2032, before Brisbane and back to Melbourne. So it's all go go from here. <laughs> I can't imagine. So thanks, thanks for taking the time, and just you know, we're gonna talk about. Uh, and, and upcoming events you guys are having obviously in Manchester. But before that, you know, for for those of you uh, that th- doesn't know that much about you, you know, and, and maybe didn't listen in the previous podcast, why don't you do like a quick intro, a little bit about you know uh, yourself, your role, and, and the company you work for, and then we'll we'll dive into the events after that. Okay, Ali. Um, so Major Events International, 15 years old. I founded it based on the lessons I felt working for previous major event companies. Um, billions of dollars spent every year, not always optimized. Right. Um, so procurement, always not as good as it could be. A lot of risk involved, a lot of reputational stress going around. And actually also for companies and individuals that want a career path in yeah. this industry, there was no single place that we brought people together. And that's the fundamental model of MEI, right. bringing people together, sharing right. knowledge and experience and creating opportunity. That's awesome, and and obviously as the CEO, a lot a lot of stuff on your hands, and I know you're 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 busy these days. How are you? What is your main focus up towards the upcoming events uh, in Manchester on the twenty sixth of October? Yeah, so obviously we've got that uh, summit coming up, which um, we've realised that when we our DNA is sport. Yeah. Um, but actually, when you look at sports events and you're looking at city activation, even a medal ceremony, right. you know, a screen is a screen, a stage is a stage, a sound system is a sound system. Yeah. So effectively, this UK summit is uh, has been actually a pilot for a couple of years now Nice. to look at the wider events industry. So it could be in festivals, be an air show, um, anything like that. So we've, right. we've really seen a more natural market to start it. So that's the folks in Manchester. Yeah, definitely uh, sport at its DNA, right. but bringing the event industry together, uh, and of which there are international events such as the World Cycling Championship, Rugby League World Cup, all right. being held in the UK as well. So it is a bit international, but it is yeah. predominantly aimed at the UK market. Got it. And and talk a bit about you know also you, you you angle into more it's like international events and festivals and and stuff like that too, and not just sports. But but what are some of the I, I guess key topics and elements that will be, you know, covered at, at the summit in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, we, t- we tend to put them in buckets, which I can right. go through very quickly. But the, right. you know, the, the, the fundamental message really is that there's a huge amount of capability, mm-hmm. some of which is incredibly niche. Uh, and you need uh, my, one of my favorite stories, actually, is uh, that I learned in Brazil, which is around crowd barriers. Mm. Uh, which I thought there was nothing clever about crowd barriers until the crowd barrier expert company told me that right. you need really experienced crews. You know, they, on a sports event, they don't they don't go out for weeks in advance. They are very much deployed at short notice and recovered right. very quickly. Yeah. So you need experienced crews. You need the right vehicles. It's quite a specialist skill, and yeah. that's crowd barriers. Right. So fundamentally, right across the model, that what we're looking at is knowledge sharing and insights like yep. that so people learn how to get events going. But the buckets really are around visitor experience, mm-hmm. which could be a whole raft of things, including right. technology. Yep. Crowd safety is a massive issue these days, not just right. security. Yeah. Big focus on tech uh, and what we call another huge bucket called event services, which could be insurance, logistics weather, transportation, right. and the like. So, you know, fundamentally, you know, things fall into those four buckets, but they're pretty big buckets. Right. So it's actually covering all the what what ifs and whys. 
yeah it, 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 it's about that you you never know enough right i mean right. you know that that's one that you always learn and and so we create an environment with these summits and obviously we got the next one uh after this being the international federation summit yeah. working with the cities yeah. in lausanne in, in switzerland in june which is in full planning as we speak you know right, right. now yeah um so you know the, the summits that we run and including this market visit here to australia yeah. um you know they all have a different approach but fundamentally take you to the same place getting people right. into a room yeah. speak to each other and actually learning how to collaborate so, so, so let's talk a little about like who are the people and then i guess like organizations and institutions and, and and stakeholders that will be part of this this event and that's i guess particularly more the event uh, happening in yeah. manchester yeah in manchester you, you tend to put people in communities there are the the rights holders in every definition of the word who could be right. A combination of the national governing bodies, the event hosts that we talked about yep. before yep. running in national competitions, right. um, even venue operators, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So right. in one of our circles, core to our model is another way to, to, to put it is the bias. You know, I don't particularly like that term, but it's good. Yeah. On the other side of the equation, you tend to have people who want to supply or get involved in some way in these sorts of events. So mm. in that bucket, you've got two groups of people. You've got the actual conventional suppliers across all the sectors, but you've also got the host cities that right. are seeking right. to learn and or attract. So again, right. our model, us sitting in the middle, is actually how do we enhance that communication? And that's what the summit is is all about. Mm. There will be some government agencies in there inevitably, but those are the core communities. Right. So it's essentially more more on the organizational side of things that representatives will 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 participate and 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 how how can you know these these people and and stakeholders you know kind of attend the event like what are the what are the process to be part of it i, I guess yeah the deadline yes. perhaps is coming coming up closer yeah, de the, de the so, deadline is looming and obviously yeah. we've got a dinner you know that's going on as well there's an awards done taking place and yeah. and you know so we're very keen on making sure it's a social program i mean the simplest way to do it is to jump onto our major events in international website or yeah. people are being very lazy just putting inquiries at major events international.com and just go hey you know tell me more about the summit and somebody right. in the team will fire something uh, at them right. um and, you know and and obviously we have costs to cover so we, we try and avoid being perceived as ticket sales people yeah yeah. Uh, but obviously, you know, we do have to recover the costs from actually running this event. So step one is just say, hey, what's it all about? Yeah. Send me some more information and somebody in the team will, will respond. It's never typically too late. We do have registrations, right. you know, days before it. But, you know, getting at least an indication that somebody's interested is helpful. Right. Well, I mean, like, ho hopefully out of the, this podcast, you know, people get a little bit more insight and they are ready to just go, go, go and order that, <laughs> you know, process yeah. that part of it. But uh, it, it's, you know, we, we're, we're very proud of the fact that we avoid, you know, words like it's not a conference, you know, yeah. uh, you know, you know, it, it's not a ticket sales. It's not about driving thousands of people in the room. You know, it's yeah. very much about our typical sweet spot numbers is about 250 people. Right. Um, and, and, you know, they come from and what you want is the operators. You know, you want yeah. people that make decisions. Yeah. You know, I don't mean it disrespectfully, but the president yeah. of a national governing body is not particularly the sort of person we want in the room you right. know they will be above all all the detail inevitably and so what we're yep. looking at is people that really want to engage and uh, build a relationship and and the like but i think that's a very important distinguisher and and and, and uh how can i how can i say like you know separation point too in terms of just uh you know who who is your audience right and and how yeah. you make the most value you know out of the out of the summit and and the participation and just the overall experience right like you gotta you yeah gotta now, right I, I think the, the, the cliche that i would use you know which is the motivation behind setting up mei is that the market should be it's kind of strange term but more professional than it is yeah. at the moment there should be less risk you know less waste yeah. career paths you know, new opportunities, as I said right at the beginning. And that, and that really, those are really the outcomes from the summit. Right. And and if you wanted to kind of, I guess, in a sense, I mean, like, obviously, Sporting Global focus more on the on the students and young professionals here. And, and sort of like from that aspect of, uh, you know, 
providing them with some insights and, and tips of like yeah. why 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 are, are this kind of summit this kind of gathering so important and why is this something that that they need to think about you know moving forward when they're yeah I, it's, or, it's a very good question i mean you know and that's kind of my point about you know it not being a very professional market really what we should be seeing is i mean for example i think we've touched on this before we have an, an incredibly successful uh intern program right uh, where to put it on the table again we do pay our interns um but that gives them the chance to come in very early at uh, uh ground at ground level and um get exposed to the nature of the market take learn where their orientation is going to go right. within that skill set to grow it sort yeah. of bottom up and so my advice would be for those you know in who are graduating or or not yet graduated you know, to look at it as a career path and ask, mm. right, how do I get as much experience as I can in this market right. um, in order to move up the stack? And that tends not to happen. You might think it's crazy, but it's, you know, the market at the moment is very much about relatively, whatever the term is, experienced, you know, third, <laughs> yeah. four job opportunities, drifting into the events industry in some way, right. liking it and then moving off, which is a shame. When actually it would be really good, we would bring people in at grassroots level. So, yeah. you know, our people, you know, we've got people who have been with us six years, uh, not as interns, on Saris. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they, they accelerate through the knowledge curve, right. you know, in a, in a phenomenal way. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and talk about, about, I guess, in a sense, the, the intern experience and, and I guess like what kind of uh, lessons and, and things they will kind of like learn of being part of. Of you yeah i mean what we that. what we do with our interns is put them into proper jobs which right. is a hell of a steep you know curve right. um and we don't even call them interns in their signature block and they are mentored by the team they're yeah. really stretched and given you know weighty tasks you know right. meaningful tasks yeah they're obviously as i said before they're supervised and the rest of it, but i mean what what has been an incredible amount of pleasure for me and we've been doing it now probably something like about eight years maybe a bit longer yeah um you know we didn't do it before we thought it would be a distraction and an overhead and and, okay. and it's turned out not to be the case i mean the con they're with us for a year and these mm. are typically part of their university courses right right um rather than people you know we do have people that come in for a project basis which yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You have to be a bit careful about that it doesn't become a distraction sure. um but certainly for the, those on the year program they, they go away you know with a job offer as soon as you finish university come back and see us you know um okay. so yeah yeah so you know my message would be take this market you know seriously as a, a career path but you've got to build your experience and credibility and and you, the only way you can do that is to get into you know big roles Hundred percent. And and if you wanted to provide like I guess some some final final tips and and I guess like advice for for participants for uh you know people that want to attend uh, potentially the summit uh in in Manchester like what what kind of I guess final final message would you yeah. you provide before yeah you I mean it, some of it always sounds pretty pretty obvious and mundane but it's actually yeah. not always done. One would be to prepare. You know we will let you know who's who's actually going to be there. Right. Uh, most people don't like to be bombarded by email saying, uh, can we meet up for coffee? But yeah. actually knowing that somebody is there right. and when you see a name tag or whatever that you say, yeah. oh, look, I, I did actually want to catch up with you. So being prepared, whether you're an intern or looking for a role, whatever, you know, some people are, are still a bit old school. They, they like a business card and why not? Mm. You know, because if nothing else, somebody like me is rushing around. And at least there's something in your pocket saying, who was that person? Right. So I think that's something. Um, balance of uh, content. Don't sit in every session. Do try and go off and speak to people in the margins of it. Right. It's not about sitting locked in, uh, locked in a room. And be inquisitive. Be, be personable. Engage with people. Ask big questions. Who are you? What do you do? Right. Learn how to work a room quickly. Don't get stuck in it. It's one of my big passions, my team. Don't get stuck in long conversations. Mm. You know, rather than say, okay, that sounds really interesting. You know, perhaps we could follow up. Right. And, you know, and then metaphorically exit the conversation. Yeah. And then maybe see them later on over a coffee. And then right. 
the relationship starts to mature. So avoid the big long conversations. And right. It all sounds fairly obvious, but that that those would be my little basket of uh, of subjects. And I think you know it's it goes back a little bit to what you were saying about planning, right? In a sense of like you know if you already kind of start doing those kind of introductions and perhaps you know okay let's let's take a you know talk there in the break you know just five ten minutes you know and then you kind of have a little bit of a, a schedule to work around and then you also know like okay yeah. now you know this is the time for me to go yeah. you know more exploring you know talk with new people uh, and that's, like, that's, you know, that's have, it. yeah have a setup for it you know? Make yeah i mean you know yeah. the people who go to these events whether that be time alone yet alone money it's right. a big investment right so make sure you're prepared that's it right. you know and it's you not complicated <laughs> Make make the most of it, yeah. Exactly. Well, with that, Dennis, I think you know uh, we covered a lot of different things. You know, on the, it's more of a shorter style. You know, just kind of rapid fire, just covering yeah. this, this event. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, all good, all good questions. I and I hope you know. I think we've probably given people enough of a flavor of it. So yeah, if in yeah. doubt, get in touch. Of that's course, the, you can always always go to sportingglobal.com. You know, check up. Check out their company page there as well. Well, there you go. And, and I'm sure you know down the road we're gonna have like some 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 great internship opportunities. I know you don't call them internships, but <laughs> post it on the platform as well. So for those of you that are more younger, you know, just look look out for that. You know, connect with Dennis, connect with the the, the team, you know, and 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 be proactive. You know, see see what you can yeah. get the most out of. Yeah, it. yeah. Follow our major event international group on LinkedIn. I've got 10,000 contacts on LinkedIn. No hardship at adding to that list as well. Awesome. Well, with that, Dennis, thank you so much for taking the time. And as always, be snuckies. <laughs> Remember that for last time, right? Be snuckies. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Okay, buddy. Thank, thank you so you. much, Ollie.